All right. So this is going to be Project Tale of Four Classrooms, which I made this year because I got creative. Um, and this is going to be considered a project, even though it's not that intensive. Just like the last one, I would say. All right. So. A Tale of Four Classrooms. I'm going to go through. These are each kind of little storyboard kind of cartoon things. And to try to put some. And it's not going to be too realistic. All right. All right. So this classroom is going to represent a functional monarchy. So this is going to be a monarchy that is is working essentially all right so i'm gonna call it the functioning monarchy all right. hey i'm jack this is my first day at this new school and i get to try out four classrooms yes try out four classrooms then i get to choose which one i like best all right hi jack i'm Ms. smith please read the rules and take a seat if you have any questions please ask me he said okay we got the rules that are up here, all kind of consistent. None of them are really what probably anybody would consider too strict, I guess. All right. Thank you for raising your hand, Jack. Do you need help? All right, everybody's working. This guy's looking a little sad about life. Here we go. Miss Smith, why do I have to do this assignment? This assignment is stupid. Everyone in here is stupid. <laughs> Bobby, you just broke multiple rules. This is your warning. Get to work or you're going to the office. I do what I want. And she's like, go to the office. This little girl's freaking out. Jack is unimpressed. So, essentially, you've got rules, you've got a quote-unquote monarch who is essentially balanced. So, if you are behaving yourself, doing your thing, then you don't have any problems. You start acting, like, ridiculous, uh, standing on chairs and whatnot. Now, you're going to have some problems. All right. Next, we're going to have a dysfunctional monarchy. And it's so dysfunctional that I spelled dysfunctional wrong. I like to call myself out. It's over here. All right, here we go. Well, Bobby didn't follow the rules, so that means that. Let's see how Miss White's class goes. All right. You must be direct. I'm Miss White. Do your work and know what I say goes, and you'll do fine. Yes, ma'am. All right, we got him sitting down. Miss White, I need help. Are you serious? I'm going to talk to you guys for every question you ask that are already answered. You didn't raise your hand, so you can have silent lunch for, for that while we're at it. Silent lunch, but I just had a question. Dang. This guy, every day, man. Every day. <laughs> I amuse myself. And now you're talking back. Just get out. I'm in charge. This is my classroom. And you are here because I let you be here. I'm going to have to make stricter rules for the rest of you. Mm -mm -mm. So we've got kind of over the top. You essentially might break something like the no raising hand maybe rule. And we've got this over the top response. Also very judgmental. I threw in the little tax bit because that's like a monarch's favorite thing to do. Disgruntled. Uh, subject right here. Shocked subject right here. Sad subject right here. She's going to everybody's worst nightmare. The prison of silent lunch. Very terrifying. All right. Now we have the state of nature classroom. All right. 
Well, if I chose that classroom, I'd be stressed all day. She only cared about herself. Let's check out... Wait. There's only a room number. Room 202? Assignment. Compare democracy and monarchy. We got some people jumping on a table. Some people, like, doing craziness over here. And here's Jack. Uh, hi. Then he finds these guys. And here's the assignment. Where's the teacher? There, she is. there is no teacher. It's a democracy. Sort of. Really. Everyone decided we weren't going to do the assignment. So they're being crazy. Some people work. Some of us can't. Some of us don't because we can't focus. There's Jack. I guess that sounds fun. She's like, yeah, I'll probably fail this class, though. It's fun until somebody steals your phone. They took, they took it last week, and we still haven't met to vote on the consequence for the students. Make sure you watch your stuff. Also, be ready to fight if somebody punches you. They'll just sit there and wait until you're not paying attention. I bet you're going to ask about the principal coming here next. No one will come to this classroom to help. There's no one in charge, so don't bother calling for help. Or protection. And class is over. Look out, new kid. And he throws a stool at poor Jack, who's contemplating his existence. <laughs> and now we have a democracy classroom. Yeah, I'm going to have a headache for a week. It's cool to have freedom, but having to watch my back for an hour is going to get exhausting. Someone sneaking up and busting me in the head with a stool every day. No, thank you. All right. Come in. Everybody is decently seated. We've got Simon up here. Welcome to class. He comes in. He's like, oh, probably like everybody's actually sitting down. So that's decent. Where is the teacher? Wait, this isn't like that other class, is it? The one where you have to protect yourself all the time? No. We were like that first, and then we got tired of it, created some rules. Each of us has to look up something that achieves the goal on the board. Then we teach each other. If we need to make a decision, we vote on what we want. Majority of rules. What if somebody does steal your stuff or busts you over the head with a stool? Then we vote to see what the punishment will be. We have basic rules. You should have as much freedom as possible without infringing on others' freedom. You should be able to learn freely without some, but someone interfering, and you have the right, have a right to your property, so no stealing. Busting someone over the head interferes with rule one and two. And this works as long as you follow the rules and have the same goal as we do. If you don't want to learn, then the other class is probably more for you. We had to kick out a few people or send them to the office. So essentially here, this is a big thing in a democracy is the people who are in it have to have the same goal and work towards that goal. You can't have anybody who is essentially focusing on something different. Otherwise, you're going to have. You're going to start ending up probably with more like this. And then maybe later this. So now, here are our questions. Which of the philosophers would have liked the functional monarchy classroom due to it having one person in charge? If Hobbes, Locke, Voltaire, Montesquieu. Anybody want to take a guess? It was this one. No, nobody wants to take a guess. You had four options. No. It's not happening today. It's not happening for me either. All right. This is Hobbes. The one who thinks that everybody is, in a sense, uh, not born good. People are selfish, greedy, and they need one person in charge, but they want but he wants somebody in charge that's, like, benevolent in a sense that's fair versus this over-the-top monarch. All right. Who had, who had control to legislate 
legislate, create rules, execute, make sure the rules are followed, and judge. Judge if the rules have been broken and what the consequences will be in the functional monarchy. Teacher, student, no one. So that is this one. So who was in charge here in this one? This top one up here. Teacher. Yeah, the teacher. So the teacher essentially made the rules. Then after this guy kept being ridiculous, enforced the rules. And then she passes judgment and is like, all right, get out. You're being ridiculous. So number two is teacher. Good job. I'll give you guys XP after, after this for answering. All right. Which of the philosophers would have accepted the dysfunctional monarchy classroom as an acceptable way to conduct a classroom? Hobbes, Locke, Voltaire, Montesquieu. So this is the, this one. And basically this philosopher would have said, well, you can't govern yourselves because you'll act like this. So it's better to have this person instead of nobody at all. So anybody want to take a guess at having a essentially a over the top monarch? Are you guys sure? Are you positive? Let me put this this way. There are three on there that are very much like, like America, freedom, justice, and one on there that's like, you need a babysitter because you guys are going to act like a bunch of hoodlums. Wow. Well, it's Hobbes. Hobbes was like, because you guys can't act right, you can't govern yourselves. It's better to have the one person in charge, even if they are terrible. I think it shows up in. Is it in, is it in this one? Or is it in the video? Can't remember. Who had control to legislate, create rules, execute, make sure the rules are followed, and judge, judge if the rules have been broken and what consequence will be in the dysfunctional monarchy? So up here... Who was making the rules? Who basically punished people for whatever? All right, yeah, it's the teacher. Now, what was interesting, I think, here, where, and I very purposefully did not put rules up here, um, but she's like, do as I, uh, what is it? Know what I say goes, and you'll do fine, basically. And... She kind of has some here. They're not, they exist, but they are not like spelled out. So number four is the teacher. All right. What was the mood in the dysfunctional monarchy? So that's that same classroom. Shock, sadness, discontent, calm, happy, content. 
chaotic, stressful, uneasy. So let's go back to, we're talking about this one. And try to look at some of their faces too, like this one, this one, this one. Anybody want to take a different guess? That's a hint. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be shock, sadness, discontent. Even though it does say stressful in the third one, I didn't realize actually that I put that in there. So that kind of... Uh, messes with it so if we look up here yeah there exactly there wasn't anything chaotic everything was essentially in order so here we've got this one this one is shock then we've got this guy who's like everyday man every day he's just kind of over it and then we've got sadness right here She's like, I got to go to the silent lunch prison. All right. Which philosopher would be the most unhappy with the state of nature government? Hobbes, Locke, or Voltaire? That is this one right here. State of nature. There's one who would be the most stressed out by this. He grew up in a time of war. He wanted the monarchy for that reason. And remember, this is the most unhappy. Let me Hobbs. I know. I'm all about the Hobbs today. Like I said before, this is his biggest fear is people are going to be stealing your stuff, watching your back, throwing stools, losing their mind. He's like, there's got to be somebody in here because you guys can't govern yourselves and act right. So he's like, this is at least better than this. Because here you're not getting anything done. So number six is Lo uh, Hobbes. Mm. Now, Check all of the philosophers that would have liked the democracy classroom best. So that is this one. This last one. And let's go. Let's see. If we look at the middle one, we have basic rules. You should have as much freedom as possible without infringing on others' freedom. You should be able to learn freely without somebody interfering. And you have a right to your property, so no stealing. I guess I should say, which one? There's four points on this. So basically, we just got to eliminate one who is not cool with the democracy classroom, who thinks that this would never happen and actually work. Mm -hmm. It's Hobbes. Hobbes does not think that this will work. Hobbes is going to be like, there's no way 
somebody's going to mess up. Eventually, there's going to be a fight. Eventually, there's going to be at least one person who's running around stealing stuff. They're going to get bored. They're going to get crazy. And you will need somebody in charge. And if you don't have somebody in charge, then you're going to end up with a hot mess. So you're going to check everything except for Hobbs. So. So all of those guys would have wanted a democracy where you have essentially freedom of speech, you have um, your right to property, trying to make things that are fair. They think if you leave one person in charge, it's going to end up like classroom two. Now is the part where it is your opinion. So, and this is 10 points for your opinion, and then we've got one more. So you've got two, which essentially don't have a right or wrong answer, but the way you explain what you think is important. So this is going to be, do you think the democratic classroom would work? So essentially real life, would it work? And then why or why not? And so this is kind of the criteria. So first, answer the first question. Then second, this is the one where you need to give three reasons why it would or would not work. And you can use examples. Um, and you can come up with what might happen in the room. So you can basically give some hypothetical examples. And I put this question is worth 10 points. So make your answer good because this is a project grade. This is not some piddly little whatever. So first I would go in here and I'd either put yes or no. Right. So I'll put like number one. Let's say I'm going to go with no. Now for the second part, I need the why or why not. So maybe I put two. And All right, so basically, what I got here? Okay, that one. Person could begin to steal, like, okay, yeah, another's property. The real comes after they vote for that person to leave. If the person will not leave, now you will need to use force. Um, let's see.
No. Be sun. No. Sun. Yeah. And then I might put So it could be just as simple as some people are greedy and will steal, for example. I could also put, like, let's say hypothetically I put yes. So I would put, like, number one, yes. Then number two, I'd put, and I could just say, So, like, as long as everybody has the same goal and does their fair share, it could work. Maybe, um, So, since they have consequences, then um, maybe you just kick out those people and you'd be back to a functioning room. And I'd need one more. Alright, so maybe people in general want to be good it's almost, will try their best, especially if the benefit is they don't have to watch their backs every day. Right. Exactly. So this is your opinion. Um, I mean, you could use some of this, I think, because there's only so much that you can come up with, but in a sense, uh, you'd want yours to look different from mine. <laughs> uh, and that's too why I did two of these examples a little bit differently because it really also depends on what you what you think you're gonna have to choose one or the other you could put like yes and no and try to explain like what you mean by that so really like here this is almost like a yes and no because i put as long as everybody has the same goal and does their fair share it could work so it isn't like a 100% yes. Um, so there is, so you can kind of work this the way you really think it would work or not work. Let me go to nine to give you an example here. Which classroom would you choose if you had a choice and why? So, first answer, which one? Then, give specific reasons why you like that classroom. I'm basically looking for three senses with three reasons, at least. So, really, I want three reasons. That's why I'm not putting that much into, I want such and such sentences. I want three reasons. Um, and you can also say, like, why you don't like other classrooms. So, let's just say, for example, I could put... All right, so in this one, I'm picking state of nature. 
And I'm going to go with... I like the complete freedom. I know I can. So I like put, I know I can project myself and watch my things. So I would be fine and really like the idea of standing on tables. And then So let's see. I like the complete. So I like the complete. Now let's put the democracy classroom. Okay. So uh, here I've got. I like the complete freedom in that classroom. I know I can protect myself and watch my things. And then down here, I've got, I don't like dysfunctional monarchy because it's too strict. The functional monarchy still has one ruler who could turn unfair quickly. I don't like the democracy classroom because I just don't think it would last. Let's say I go with something else. Let's say I go with the... Let's say I go with the functional monarchy. So I will put functional monarchy. And then give my reasons. All right, so yeah, that's fine. Um, I put for this, like, I think this classroom is the most practical. You have one person in charge. That is fair. I don't have to rely on other students to be good. I just have to rely on myself, and one person in charge will handle the people who are causing problems. I really don't want to sit and vote for the consequences for students who don't follow the rules. I want to do my work and be done. So... Something like that would work for functional monarchy. And again, there's like a multitude of reasons. There's a lot of reasons you can go with. 
All right. So that is not the only thing. Let's say I go with the democracy. So for democracy, I like the idea of everybody, everyone participating in making rules and getting the goal completed. I can choose how to help and that will help others. I think we would do a good job of determining consequences and it would be fairer than one ruler. So because you've got people coming from the same perspective, basically. And once you get this done, you can submit. If you do not finish this, just close the tab and you can finish it later. Don't submit it. Then again, I do have it, I think, so you can, I do have it so you can submit multiple times, I think. Here, let me submit this one. But I think. That is how I have it. So that if let me see. Yeah, so if you needed to go back, you would just have to put these answers in again up here. These ones you are writing it. You need to put some good stuff in here. Otherwise, I'm taking points off. I'm not giving you points just for answering it. That is not going to cut it. And I will have to go in and I will have to grade these. So if you submit it, it shouldn't end up being like complete, essentially. I have to go in and grade the rest of it. So these question eight and nine, it is question eight and nine, right? Yeah. 